Hey everyone, welcome to Pop XP. And before the show starts, make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell to get notifications when we go live and we upload awesome new content. And don't forget, if you can, make sure to share our stream on all your social media outlets. We appreciate it, and thanks for helping us grow the Pop XP channel. What's up, everybody? Teen Sensation Billy Tucci here, and I am so excited to bring one of my favorite guests in the entire world onto the show tonight. Uh, but first things first, today, the 8th of February, or is today the 9th of February? The 8th of February, 2024, is International Scotch Day, so cheers. So, uh, what the heck, man? Let's uh, do some Thursday Night Live with Billy Tucci! Hello, everybody! Welcome to Thursday Night Live with Bill Tucci. Behold his mighty hand! Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang, Tucci gang. Just want to manage expectations. Weird, weird. This is the worst. Nicely done. So good in. Thank you. Old Bean, good to see you. Hello, everyone. Billy Tucci here, joined by, I can't call my sidekick because he's wearing the hat. I guess I'm your sidekick. JC Tech Vaughn, good to see you guys. Evil One, good to see you, buddy. Cheers. Um, James Bella, good to see you. Two Pal, Brad uh, Molchan, good to see you. The great Dan Genovese is here. Jimmy Reyes, what's up, brother? Um, we, we're going to have a great show tonight, uh, Jeff. It, it's going to be a great show. Um, we have someone who I like to refer myself to as the kid brother he never wanted. <laughs> um, one of the giants of uh, of the comic scene in general. I mean, it's hard to argue. He could be arguably the most successful comic creator of the 21st century. He's about, he's right now just launched yesterday his 40th, kickstarter campaign i believe it's 40 um and uh where do we go with this uh tomorrow's a big day we have celebrate um i ran the crowdfunding comics uh intro first because well we this essentially is a crowdfunding comic show because we're going to talk about coffin comics all new um kickstarter lady death demonic o uh omens number one chapter 19 in the lady death universe old bean Chapter 19. So without further ado, you're sworn, I'm sworn, we're all sworn. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, the king, Mr. Brian Polito. Greetings, you savages. How are you doing tonight? Thank you so much for having me on Thursday Night Live with Billy Touche and the esteemed J.C. Vaughn. What's yes. up, boys? Good to see you, brother. Good to see you, man. Good to um, be seen, man. And, and th great to see you, JC, because you did something wonderful for us, um, yes. which I know we're, we're all greatly appreciated. Um, yeah. Again, I was opening up with the crowdfunding comics show instead of just this, the Thursday Night Live with Billy Tucci, because today, because essentially we, we are talking crowdfunding comics. I got something in the mail. Yeah. To cover my address, even though I, I covered it. From Coffin <laughs> Comics. But, bro. Yeah. What is this? I, don't, I think this we have petroleum-based comics here. What the I, hell? I it's like somebody was 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 the the UPS driver eating a a, a salad and spilled his salad dressing all over. I think so. <laughs> let's, man. Let's, let's, Billy, let's just call it that. Let's That's call it up. that. I but uh, again, as always, superior packing. My Thank my you. friend, yeah, everything I have to, is blame USPS on that one. Lickety split. I I I I love uh backing. Coffin Comics products. Again, look at it. So even though it was soaked on the outside, the inside is pristine. Oh, good news. Okay. I'm feeling relieved. Here's my stuff. 
Oh, look at all the swag. I got to tell you, Brian, you have the best swag in the business. Thank you. I oh get carried God. away. Holy and mackerel. There was one campaign we had about 48 physical free bonus items. Are you it kidding? was crazy. Holy crap. I, I was having nightmares trying to come up with stuff. What's the new thing that I could do? Pens, whatever. Uh, yeah, we really hit a peak about two years ago on doing those. Had to switch up the game. I love it. Chaotica Lady Death. Thank you. Oh, the bonded edition. That's cool. Yes. As Gold we expand badass our swag. Universe of Stories, Chaotica is our new gal in town, but she's actually Lady Death's daughter, and she's been in her storyline since Chapter 3, Extinction Express. Wow. So, so we are obviously on Chapter 19 of Lady Death. Um, we uh, are. So here it is. There's a mock-up of the actual book, Lady Death. Uh, nice, the figure pin. Yeah. Demonic Omens, Chapter 19. Same creative team, myself and Mike McLean, illustrator Diego Bernard, and everyone's friend, Wes Hartman. Yes. In the book. Wow, nice. Yeah. And uh, met Wes at Albuquerque Comic Con a couple of years ago and vibed and started working on covers. And then this opportunity came up. And then, and I am aware also that he works with your team. And then yes. it is lettered by veteran letterer Marshall Dillon, who's lettered all of our books since the very beginning. Marshall, you gotta love Marshall Dillon and, and Wes Hartman. Yes, Wes Hartman um, is also part of the the trifecta yeah. of greatness uh, when it comes to uh, some news we have to announce today, which has been announced. Obviously, it's been everywhere. Um, but first, let's focus. Let me share my screen, and Brian, let's talk about uh, Lady Death Demonic Omens number one, brother. Let's talk, talk about to it. Us. Look, Here it just went up again. You're closing in on three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, we've been we've been funding for twenty five hours, so the stories are mighty, uh, coming out in force. This storyline kicks off our year long company wide event, Hell Again. Now, Billy, you've actually pointed out that my comic books get really crazy and super epic, but this one is truly on steroids. The scale and the scope that we get to throughout this storyline is bananas, even by my own uh, track record. Now, this story is a real bookend to the beginning of Lady Death, uh, The Reckoning. The original storyline, three issues, a girl named Hope renounces her humanity to save her mother's soul from the devil in hell. It is a real rumination on how to control the darkness inside, maybe to... Uh, reforge it into something else but here we are all these years later literally three decades later and now lady death meets up with her arch enemy again he has been gone in our storyline for literally two decades but he is back and he is here to dismantle the life of lady death in the entire coffin comics cast of characters and to say this one is epic would be an understatement. And he ain't pulling no punches. So while you're, let's uh, share your video, brother. Let's do it. Hello, everybody. This is Brian Polito, creator of Lady Death. And we are back to unleash the most savage chapter of Lady Death's undead life. An all new 64 page original graphic novel entitled Lady Death, Demonic Omen. Elegant is coming. Lady Death returns to our Earth only to discover two years have passed and unprecedented prosperity has spread across the globe. But soon, this peace is slashed to bloody pieces. A strange and savage cult emerges, bent on chaos and destruction. Like a virus, its numbers multiply and disperse, burning everything in their wake. Now, Lady Death must race against time and battle demonic forces to save a trusted friend from an unspeakable fate. Watching from the shadows, an old foe devises a nefarious plan to dominate the world and bring Lady Death to her knees. The company-wide crossover event starts here. Guest starring La Muerta, Hell Witch, Lady Satanus, and Chaotica. 
Helping me bring this hellacious chapter to life is our returning team. Co-writer Mike McLean, illustrator Diego Bernard, Wes Cartman, veteran letterer Marshall Dillon. And look, here's the thing. This project is done. We just got a print. I need your help because let's be honest, you're the one that makes this happen. Please pledge now. We tell everyone you know. Thank you so much, everybody. You rule. Exceptional. Thank you. A lot, of, a lot of fire and brimstone coming your way. Man, man, are you happy? You know what I love about this? And I want to talk about, um, I, I had just done a letter um, uh, for our newest book, which is our special edition for the 30th anniversary, She Way the Warrior, number one. It's the original art edition. Yeah. And I talked about, I mentioned you. In, in, uh, well, Jeff actually interviewed me. JC oh, cool. interviewed me and, and talked about you and how you inspired me. And also I talked about the image guys, Rob Liefeld, yeah. who we're going to yeah. talk about here as well. Uh, Mark Silvestri, sure. Jim Lee. And what drew me to you as well as them is that um, it doesn't seem like work. Um, we all know how much work it is, but there is a passion <laughs> um, that the, all the image guys embraced uh, and expounded. And the same with you. Again, I mean, your enthusiasm for Evil Ernie, when I met you at San Diego Comic Con in August 1993, it was contagious <laughs> on me. And on my way home, on the plane ride home, that's when I decided I'm going to do this myself. Um, how is it after after 30 years and millions of comics sold, um, comic shops, comic conventions, store signings, uh, multiple editions, etc. 40 crowdfunding campaigns, Kickstarter campaigns, um, 19 chapters of Lady Death, and I assume this is the Lady Death in the coffin, right? That this is that's right. Uh, the 21st sure. century. How do you maintain that youthful exuberance and enthusiasm and love and passion for this wonderful character as as the creator? Because it's easy for us as readers, but you as the creator. Well, I love this character so much, and she seems to be the perfect conduit for me to express a lot of ideas, whether they're just in the domain of fun and entertainment, or to take a look at gradual evolutions in the character in terms of her persistence, uh, her arcing from villain to anti-hero, to her learning lessons by viewing heroics. She just seems to be the perfect vehicle. and. Billy, I, I feel like I am so behind all the stuff that I still want to do. So hence the stoke, the excitement, um, the planning out five years in advance and, and the waking up and having the drive to do it every day. It just has a lot to do with being excited about it and seeing a character like Lady Death and the other characters as the vehicles of this type of expression. Wonderful. Now, for, for the initiative, if you don't mind, and Jeff, of course, I will I will uh, let you uh, turn it over to you as well, because I'm sure you have some questions. And stuff. Um, can, for the you know, initiative, could you explain who is Lady Death? Very simple. Lady Death's story began in medieval times with a girl named Hope, who renounced her humanity to save her mother's soul from dark forces in hell. By doing so, she actually came to hell and while there was forged into this weapon you see before you, Lady Death. All these years later, we see her trials, her tribulations, her evolving family. Um, we get to explore whether she's a hero, she's a villain, whether humanity embraces her or fears her, all the above. But her story is not unlike a lot of our own stories. It is aspirational in nature. It is a story of persistence. She does absolutely encounter tons of tragedy because after all, on the first page of the Lady Death comic that I wrote that will have come out 30 years ago, as of tomorrow, <laughs> I said to know her story 
is to know a woman cursed. So this is always a guiding principle for me. So no matter how this character advances or achieves, there is an element where she's pulled back into dark forces. So if you like that kind of thing, that's what Lady Death is about. So Brian, if you're looking at if you're looking at the the amazing total so far, what do you say, 25 hours in? Yes. Uh, which congratulations on that. That's Thank spectacular. You. Thank you so much. Um, when you're when you're looking at that, you obviously have, and you you and I have talked about this. We've talked about it on this show, as a matter of fact, how devoted the fans are. Uh, I I I've said only slightly sarcastically that if you were to put out Lady Death refrigerators, they would sell <laughs> uh, because the fans are that loyal. But how do you go about getting new fans? And this is, I'd ask this question to anybody with a long running character. How do you go about getting new fans when you've obviously got this incredible mythology built up? How, how do you keep it accessible? Well, I mean, that, uh, that's a multi-pronged question and I'll answer it in parts. First, it is incumbent upon all of us as creators to remember the notion that the first given chapter or comic that a person picks up could be their first experience of a character. So we do try to avoid it being dense or inaccessible. So um, I remember growing up, I noticed as I would read Spider-Man within the first three pages, I got the crux of the idea and then it was laid out for me and I could be just on board. So yeah. by design, we do that. And we have what we'd call an A story, the main plot and focal point. But we might have B, C, and D threads that we carry forward. Some, some are Easter eggs that have lasted for years. And those are for the folks who like to read, reread, to pull the material apart. Sure. So, so that we, we do see all of the books in this contained universe as one humongous story, but we do kind of look at each chapter or two chapters as standalone stories as well. Sure. Um, you know, we do like to offer things to the sworn, but I would like to address that notion, except it, it has to, for me, it has to always come from the right place, a place of passion, authenticity, excitement. So for example, in this particular campaign, we're offering this cool, uh, what we call a uh, colossal coin, uh, four inches around or 2.75 inches in diameter. Hang on, Brian, hang on. Let me make you let me make you big. Hang on. See if I can Whoa. show that. Or actually here. Is that number one? Is that the original cover too? It is. Wow. Yeah. And, okay. Oh my god. Yeah, and it's it's gigantic. So here here it is. Uh and That's it's amazing. it's in packaging that you could take out. It comes with its own stand. Uh but yeah, the the image itself the coin itself is uh much larger than a basic coin i'll show you i'll illustrate that as well so this is this gigantic coin we're making and this is the standard 1.75 inch coin so this is a beast but this would be an example of you know giving folks something cool and fresh uh and from the heart unbelievable and and uh, i wanted to uh whoop Hang on, let me uh, make you smaller. Um, I want to share uh, the, the screen because one of the things, too, that brought, that I think has helped the company grow so much is, you know, your customer service. Coffin Comics customer service really is second to none. Thank you, dude. Um, well, well, that speaks to, I mean, uh, I should shut up, but I mean, it speaks to the notion of between us and our readers, our fans, our backers is trust. And if you actually do business analysis, there's a concept called the speed of trust. And if you could establish trust with people and you're trustworthy, you're transparent, and you acknowledge your mistakes, you can actually accelerate your business. So um, since this is crowdfunding comics too, that'd be the one piece of advice I would give out to people is, you know, be your word, be trustworthy, and you actually reap the benefits. Now it requires rigor. It requires promises. It requires putting yourself out there to people, but I believe that's what it requires. Excellent. But I love how, I mean, you, you have these massive campaigns, but I love how you, and there's a lot to soak in. Yeah. Um, lots of, lots of great perks, wonderful perks. Um, but then you, you throw this in, which you never see um, is you give them like a how to yeah, literally a how to order. What do you have questions with? 
and and you have the questions, you lay things out on how to do this. But again, look at this backer support access, old bean. Yeah. My God, and they yeah, give the man. hours of the operation of Coffin Comics, and just send us a message, you know. Yes. And you, this is how you do it from the computer, um, yeah, from it, your phones. It's. I mean, Coffin Comics started out this new newest publishing venture uh, 16 years ago out of a spare bedroom. And when I finally had the ability to hire a person, the first person I hired, their title was customer service manager. So you understand where my priorities were since the beginning and continue to be. There's there's no change in that. You know, our current customer service manager, Moonshine Mel, is uh, phenomenal. And she's out there. She'll be answering the campaign, the comments, of course, any inquiries we get directly. Always trying to problem solve, see what we could do to keep people satisfied. But yeah, I think customer service is paramount. And there's moonshine right there. There's moonshine. Yep. And here she I, is. I, I love I love that all three of us have worked with Marshall and all three of us have worked with Wes. Yeah. <laughs> just just great. Just a just a fantastic, fantastic team. Thank you. Um look at this. Look at the look at these contributing cover artists that you have to the book. There yeah. might even be a secret, not a secret, but if you scroll down, you might see old Bill Tucci. Yeah, that's that, true. Uh, our boy, uh, that's Matt right. Stapleton at the at your convention at the Tucson Comic Con, exactly. commissioned me to do a thing, and I'm like, sure. And then you Boom. came by, and you were like, yeah, let's I'm make a cover. <laughs> it's funny, Matthew Stapleton. He's like bragging today. He's like, I have four commissions that became covers, and he's right. He is. Yeah. He well, is. thank you, Matthew, for that. Tru truly appreciate, it, buddy. Good seeing you. Um, but let's go through this art. I mean, like Wes. Wes is wonderful. Your your entire art team. Um, let's and let's focus on them real quick. I know we've talked about. Yes, that we now. have what the creative you know, team. Yeah, the my co writer. Uh, yep. My co writer is Mike McLean. He and I simply met at Phoenix Comic Con, and we really just gelled. And uh, I mean, it is. It's been a great, passionate, creative experience uh, mm -hmm. working with Mike. I mean, we we are very different people, but we share. Uh, same view of story and it's really one of the more delectable and fun elements of what we do now next up you have diego bernard who's been yeah. working with us for five years and by his own choice re-upped with coffin comics and it is a delight to receive his pages every day during the work week you know one page a day uh amazing work what what i noticed early on about writing comics was you you are perceived as a better writer when the art is phenomenal. So oh, sure. oh, yeah, oh you know, yeah. So Diego Bernard like makes our job that much more easy. Now Wes also we've just known for the last couple of years. We've seen his work working with Crusade. And then he and I actually got a chance to meet and spend some time together at Albuquerque Comic Con, and he was actually in the area because I believe his wife's family is from Mesa, Arizona and visited us and uh, is, is now been doing cover work and now the interiors on the lady desk. And Marshall was actually a referral uh, to me. And we just, we just got on uh, phenomenally. And I, I can't speak highly enough of Marshall, his professionalism, uh, just, you know, that he's like a comics lifer, like a lot of us are, and he's a consummate professional. So yeah, yeah he's done 40 of our books and he's just terrific. I want to, I want to echo that. Uh, if he hadn't been committed to you guys, I would have never used another letterer. Uh, I'm very fortunate to, to work with Mindy who works with Billy yeah. and she, she's doing my stuff now, but I went 11 years where nobody else, I didn't even think of calling anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's definitely one of the tops. Yep. Yeah. And he's great. I mean, he helps us with pre-press and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I said this in the beginning too, and I hold to it. Early on, when we got back into the publishing game, there were some there were some things that were new. And what I uh, greatly appreciate to this day that Marshall brought to the table was this utter three dimensional understanding of prepress, such that our file delivery was always flawless, and that just lends um, a certainty that sometimes is lacking. So I've, I've always been grateful for that. Yeah, absolutely. great, great absolutely. captions, great lettering, great coloring, great art, Thank great you. dialogue. Thanks. La Moretta makes an appearance in this, as does uh, Chaotica. Yeah. And Hell Witch. 
This yeah. is to destroy all monsters of the Coffin Comics universe. It seems. Dude, that's the perfect way to put it. It's bananas. You know, it's like, it's our terrestrial version of like Crisis on Infinite Earth. It's just like, it's it's hell on our Earth. You know, our story Earth. And uh, yeah, and it's really led all the way up to this. And I would say that I am known, and we are known for doing epic storylines, but this will be a crescendo. And in 2025, our stories will actually get very, very intimate in scope. It'll actually be a paradigm shift because, you know, it's just fun to switch it up. So in 2025, people could actually expect very smaller scale, quite intimate storylines where we're really following singular characters uh, uh, on specific journeys as opposed to like these massive multi uh cast storylines where every character is getting three to eight pages and we're advancing that their storylines like this is next year is all super focused stuff it's almost like you're moving on from the lee kirby silver age explosion of marvel to now the frank miller daredevil-esque type of uh Dude, you could not have said it better because that's truly like a touchstone the whole the year one concept you know that uh, Frank Miller, Dave Mazzuccelli did together that real intimate type of storytelling mm -hmm. and uh, going back to origins and looking at them a new way is exactly what we intend to do. So you're absolutely right. Hey, Brian, um, let's yeah. real quick. Uh, um, are you new to Lady Death? As Jeff was talking about. Yeah, I, I, I love this. I had not looked at the campaign yet. And there's the answer right there. Yeah. Yes. So tell us about this. Get a free digital sampler. What a wonderful idea. So we've been doing a free digital sampler program for several years. I am here to let you know that our digital samplers have been downloaded over 200,000 times. So it is one of the gateway drugs to expanding our readership. And, you know, Jeff, I must go back to one question you asked. Our obsession is to increase our readership. Yeah. So we do it in a multitude of ways. You know, first of all, word of mouth is phenomenal, but we do use, um, uh, web-based advertising, whether it's Google, Facebook ads, or these enticers like the free digital sampler, it, it really does the job. Mm -hmm. So we do a digital sampler giving a six page um, uh, intro of each one of our main characters. And at the end, if you like our stuff, you could click and go right to our store and, you know, experience more. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, Brian, well, let's talk about some of these, uh, some of the stress goals that you guys unlocked. You call them bonus items. Yeah, we call them free, uh, free bonus items. So yeah. love use, I love the idea of using the word free because, in a sense, I think folks are really paying for, let's say, the premiere edition, but now all this stuff is extra stuff that's free, but that it's earned. So, in this case, as soon as we hit $100,000, which happened within eight minutes and 30 seconds, I might oh. add, um, ah. ding ding. We unlocked a free 32-page comic, which is the art of demonic omens. So we actually collect all the beautiful covers together in a free 32-page comic that comes with the 64-page comic. So if you think of it this way, for $32, you get at least the 64-page comic square bound, the 32-page comic, free U.S. shipping, free digital download, and all free unlocked bonus items. I'd have to say that's a pretty good value. Now, additionally, as, as you look here at 125, 150, 175, what we're doing is enhancements of our main edition, foil enhancements, and then actually increasing the page count of the story from 40, pa 40 pages to 48, and then actually to 56 pages of story and art. Wow. Now, if we're lucky, and I think we are, yeah, we've already passed this. We yeah, actually, you passed them both. <laughs> yeah, we, we're, 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 we've been doing these cool um, pins, late, um, sword pins. So Lady Death has had over six swords and we've, uh, through the series of Kickstarter campaigns have been uh, unlocking them. And they're actually pins that you could wear. And the goal is to do all six of her pins uh, in the next 18 months. Phenomenal. Just wonderful. Try to keep wonderful. it kind of fun. It, it just keeps going. <laughs> you, yeah. You've unlocked a bunch of these. So you're closing in, you're, you're all over 160. 165 maybe when we when we went out live well we're so right at working. yeah we're right under 300 right now i and i love your stickers they're nice vinyl and Thanks. also uh for those of you these these all of these free bonus items they're not cheap um and i sure. i love that you put like the, the silver foil i love that you put the money back into the books as well yeah. and then you give us these great great i mean this thing is thick this is I can put this on my car. 
You know, it's crazy. This is how I see some of this stuff. So, you know, things like campaign stickers or we call them campaign cards. In my mind, it's like when Metallica releases a record, let's say Master of Puppets, what comes with it is a bunch of swag. Like you could get the album, you could get the shirt. And in my mind, these campaign stickers mark a period of time that we all share when this thing came out and, you know, just blew up and what we were doing at the time. Hopefully these stickers they're placed throughout people's lives on refrigerators, guitars, computers, and they can look back and go, oh, damn, I remember when Demonic Omens came out, man. You know, this is what was happening. So that's the idea. They're kind of like a touchstone of the time we all shared together when we put this out. That's wonderful. And, and you could tell because, like I said, the passion, the love, the, the you guys, Coffin Comics spares no expense in giving all of these freebies. We don't. Um, I promise you, our financial manager is like, do we really have to spend all this money? And it's like, Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, Brian. So we're we're fast approaching three hundred thousand dollars on this campaign, which launched yesterday. Yes. Uh, a little over twenty six hours ago, maybe. Yeah, twenty. Uh, yeah, twenty five hours. Yeah, I'm looking. Twenty five hours stuff. ago, three hundred thousand dollars. Whoa! You get a campaign hollow foil card, and that's a bitchin' image. Tell us about this one. So the campaign holofoil card, if you take a look, right now it says TBD raised. When the campaign ends, and that very hour, we're actually going to put the total in there. And then we're going to write the amount of backers and the amount of returning backers so that it has more of a personal nature. Yeah, as we sit, we're getting so close. 296, getting close to that 300 mark. Just fantastic. So I want to... Scroll down because there's, there's a cover that caught my eye, and I think that's uh, I, I know that's one I'm gonna get. I'm a big fan of all of your artists. Um, I've worked with a lot of them, um, but I gotta tell you, Rob Liefeld, Rob Liefeld, Lady. De so we, I spoke with Rob. I had Rob on about two months ago. Hang on, let me go big on you. I had Rob on about uh, two months ago in the Pop XP, and then we decided we're gonna swap covers, and I'm like, that's, oh, that's cool. come true, dude. So Rob cool. Liefeld drawing Lady Death. Are yes. you fucking kidding me? Yeah, the fanboy in me is like totally thrilled and delighted. I I make no bones about it. I, I have nothing but admiration for the, the image guys and, and Liefeld. You yeah. know, I told this to Rob. I said that I think comics were in a real doldrum in the early 90s. And when Rob was in the Levi's 501 commercial, what was exciting about that was that we could see people in our own age range making comics, showing that it was possible. You know, yeah. whereas I believe that prior to that, comic creators were somewhat faceless or, or candidly, they, they seemed to be from a different generation. So when Rob came on the scene, and then creatively, he was a power, it continues to be a powerhouse, very explosive layouts, really cool, unique approaches to storytelling. For example, for me, X Force, the notion of a superhero team as a paramilitary force, I thought was completely boundary pushing at the time. Yeah. So to have Rob uh, agree to do a cover was is phenomenal. I love it. I mean, you know, the fan in me, that's why you see so many different need artists I go after because I want the experience we all want, which is to see our characters or the characters we love brought to life by these phenomenal talents that have defined their generation. I think what's what's amazing about this, I, I I love I love good timing. Yeah. And you know, I'm I'm 15 years too old for Thundercats. <laughs> oh, it was not it was never my bag. Me either, yeah. And and yet I saw Rob's cover for Thundercats number one, and I'm like, I want to freaking buy that book. Yeah, yeah. he rocked that. Yeah, he's just, I mean he's been firing on all cylinders for years. He's been you could tell he's really been stoked, and you know, the work is cool. And again, he's just one of the guys, I mean. Comics are a very tough business to remain successful in and to remain relevant. And mm -hmm. yeah, you know, obviously, Mc uh, uh, Liefeld is just you know at the top of his game doing all that stuff. He's really figured it out, which is great. Yeah. So it's a it's an honor and a thrill to have his work on, you know, to have him do Lady Death. I mean, yeah. no JC, other way yeah, JC called me. Was it last week? And you're like. We just talking about 2024. I'm gonna I'm gonna have retailers on to talk about what you know what they experienced in 2023 and what they see for 2024. And we're talking about art and stuff. And Jeff just said, like, Rob Liefeld, <laughs> Thundercats and Lady Death in the same week. Are you kidding me? Well, see, it's crazier. I mean, Rob's January has been bananas, right? Because he uh, announced Last Blood, which he's selling directly, so it's a direct to consumer. 
storyline and uh, doing that. And then, of course, he just announced his retirement from Deadpool, which yeah. I think he's just going to increase the demand tenfold. So, yeah, Liefeld is uh, he's a master man. He knows he knows how to uh, play the fiddle. It's amazing. Yeah. You just have so many artists. It's it, it to go through. I mean, look at this cover. I just love how how so Steven Scovia is amazing. Uh, he is probably most known as the interior artist on uh, Gunslinger Spawn, but it's been a great cover artist for for years. Yeah, now, is he drawing Jimmy the book that Jimmy is writing? Because Jimmy's writing Gunslinger Spawn now. Uh he is. Uh, so Jimmy is writing an Old West version. Of oh, okay. Gunslinger. And I don't know who the artist is. So okay. Gunslinger Spawn is a monthly. And so Stephen's been on it for a while, Stephen Segovia. But check out this cool edition. When I receive the art, I like to respond to it artistically. So I did this concept. We call it the luxury foil, giving it this cool little banding. And this is generally, this is a limited edition book, limited to 90. So, you know, the idea that we can do this type of enhanced printing is really cool. So, yeah, Stephen Segovia, Elmer Santos color. Amazing stuff. Just Great, wild, wild artists. Wonder, and we have a, a uh, we have a five dollar super chat. Thank you, Chris, the evil one. Can we talk about both the evolutions of? Uh, can we talk about the evolutions of both Lady Death and she she throughout the years? Happy thirtieth to Lady Brian and I are only forty years old. So how That's are we going to have thirty fifth anniversary? That would be great. We we weren't five years old when we created these characters. We were ten. Mm -hmm. um, happy happy thirtieth to Lady Death and cheers. On all the success, bro. Thank you, Chris, for that $5 super chat. Brian, can you discuss um, the evolution of Hope, a.k.a. Lady Death, uh, in the past, what's 30 years? If We could, we could say a quarter century, quarter century, ought five. What do we call it? A.k.a. a third. Well, so so I here's my approach. Uh, the character Hope slash Lady Death that I have been writing since 1994 on my watch is the same character. Mm. So when you talk about evolution inside the character, there might be some maturity, evolution of thought, some insights. However, I look to musical brands like Iron Maiden, Slayer, ACDC, and I love that they figured out their lane and they just keep working in their lane. Now, if you listen to ACDC from the outside, people say, ah, same record every time. I say no. I think that they work inside a blues structure and everything feels different. So for me, uh, the character Lady Death that you're reading today, I hope for you feels the same as the character that you read in 94. I'm not into the trends. I'm not into like changing her costume radically, changing her way of viewing the world. This character hopefully for you as you read this character is very consistent because again i you know i look at iron maiden their musical language they've developed it and they're working inside it there's been no about face on lady death there's no like okay we have to cover her up because that's the trend you know we have to reinvent her because that's the trend i'm anti-trend it's just like lady death has been lady death since 94 you either like her or you don't you like the lessons she may learn the insights um Maybe the, um, her stubbornness, uh, her her lack of learning, all of these things are items that we actually really do explore. But it's in increments as opposed to massive about faces or massive changes of environments or invalidation of previous continuity. It's like I'm just not into any of that stuff, man. I like I like the eternal quality of a good quality character. Yeah. Well, she's not a uh, she doesn't follow trends. She makes them. That's right. Yeah, she, she makes it so. Um, she is the trend, uh, yeah. Yeah, so going into um, comic shops. Well, um, man, let's uh, let's talk about something else. Let's. Well, first of all, thirty years ago tonight. Yeah. The eighth of February. Frank Sinatra's birthday, or the sec the sixth was Sinatra's birthday. But I digress. Doesn't matter. Thirty years ago, you and your beautiful white wife, wife Francisca are sitting home. Your books, 
You've got them. I know you've seen them, that chromium cover. Yeah. You've thrown your life savings into this or whatever. That's right. You know, you there's no plan B for you. There's I no. don't know if you had a full-time job. I know you were a director, an assistant director. You were uh, working in film at the time. I'm, Fran, I believe, was a makeup artist in the industry as well. And now you two crazy young kids <laughs> decide you're going to go full bore. You're leaving uh, a, a former publisher who had published Eva Learney. You are flagship title and yes. now you are about to unleash your character lady death onto the comics industry with a character the world had never seen before and That's was right. not expecting because there That's just right. was enough anything like it where was brian and francisca polito 30 years ago tonight on the 8th of february because tomorrow is d-day because we were getting ready to get on a plane to travel to a comic book convention, a Fred Greenberg convention in New York City. And this would be the first weekend that Lady Death came out. So we do that and we uh, meet Stephen Hughes, who's came down from Boston and we're sitting there. And that weekend we witnessed something happen with our character Lady Death, go from a $3.50 cover book so by the end of the weekend at that convention, the buzz was real. People were selling it for $10 and we kind of had a sense that we might've had something, but let me please take you back to about three weeks earlier. As you know, you know, I was a, a amateur publisher. I was just learning the craft and we chose to put a Chromium cover on that lady death book. Now the cover price was $3 and 50 cents. That meant that we set, I think we sold that to Diamond for about a dollar seventeen. The chromium covers cost about 54 cents. <laughs> the, the interiors were very cheap at the time. Now, to get additional promotion, I cut deals with Diamond, I cut deals with Cap City, but in return for their promotion, they took extra points. By the time all said and done, I'm selling this book to Diamond and Cap, etc. For about 65 off the cover the this the that the other we print the book a portion of the print run went sour the cover was misaligned when they were putting it together oh. so three weeks before this book comes out i'm on the phone with steven Hughes. i'm i'm an adult man but i'm crying i'm like for everything that we've done i am so sorry we've sold fifty-two thousand of these things but because of my mismanagement and inexperience our profit is barely $2,000 on this book. So that's where we began. And, you know, me like apologizing, you know, Stephen Hughes having put his faith in me, here we were. Yet we did pick ourselves up. We head to New York City to a comic convention to market and promote this book. And then kaboom, everything changed just from that first weekend on. It's, and it's never been the same. I remember that because I think that might have been where I gave you my piece of the art that you you commissioned me to do four months screen. earlier at San Diego. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And, and I'm trying to remember, like, now where was your booth? Did you have a, a ten foot booth? Were you like? Do well, you remember we, where you? Know, it was it was less organized like that. I think at the time, so that was a Fred Greenberg show, and yeah, you know, we're going back in time, right? So I believe that we might have had like literally two tables. And if we had a tablecloth, that was our setup. Maybe yeah, yeah. then I had some, like my banners back then were, were like renting, honestly, it'd be renting um, a film projector from somewhere like some photographic place in New York and then putting our art on the, the projector. <laughs> like it just was what it was. It was super primitive. That's just, so, it's just so, extraordinary. And again, right. because of, okay. and no. I owe so much to you. Um, if I may, um, uh, Jeff, and uh, yeah. uh, is course. is that because so many I think missed the boat on Lady Death? Yeah, yeah. That that helped us when she came out. Yeah, on the, and when she was in shops, I believe on the twenty third of March, a month and a half later. Yeah, you were. I mean, people were able to anticipate that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and finally, like, get on board. I but mean, I wasn't ready for it. Debbie and I were not ready for it at all. We. Right. It, what do we know? Oh my God. So, which uh, perfect segue into this, whether it is or not, I don't care. Um, <laughs> we're going to do that. Um, Jeff Vaughn got some interesting news. 
It's from our friends at the Fanboy Factor. Indie comic book legends Lady Death and She bring historic interlocking covers to the 2024 Overstreet Price Guide. That's oh, awesome. Oh. Jeff. The People's Champions. You. Thank you. Well, wow. I think one of the things, one of the things about this, and I, you know, I've talked pretty openly about this, guys, is is this. We live in an era where we see that comic characters even from the biggest companies come and go and and now obviously you can point at your marvel and dc and even a bunch of others that have had characters last a long time but you can't you cannot point at many indie characters that have maintained great followings that have maintained creator control and tell these stories and one of the things that I, I like is you guys you guys both come at it differently but the stuff the stuff that Brian was saying about hope and her journey it being one journey and not following fads Billy you did the same thing only different approach you have like okay now she's a mom and she's got a teenage daughter and that's what happened in the time we didn't see her right? yeah and, both of our and, characters and, and are moms but it is but it is but it is the same character yes it's the same story there's no reboot there's and 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 you know i don't i don't have anything against reboots but it's been it's become yet an, an excuse for a gazillion number ones and and all the kind of stuff in in where we substitute for lack of story and you guys, you guys have gone the opposite direction from that. You add, you add complexity to your characters' lives, the burdens that they have to bear, and and they persevere through it. And that's sort of what I find very appealing about both. Also, as a as a as a guy picking the covers for the price guide for a lot of years, I want something dynamic. I want something cool, and I want something that you know, stands for something. Mm -hmm. And I've been, you know, I'm blessed to have worked with the, the. I mean, you look at the cover artists I've worked with. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and and it's a pretty freaking good list. Oh, it's sick. And yet, and yet this was an easy call for me. And I remember we were all just standing outside your booth at San Diego, Billy, right across from Brian's booth. Yeah. And, and you guys told me it was the 30th anniversary, which of course didn't make me feel old at all. Um, <laughs> Uh, and and and, and I, I look at that and I, man, seriously, how can you not like this cover? First off, yeah, and secondly, you. and secondly, this is the thing. This is the thing. When I'm picking a cover, it's not about what I like. It's about what's important in comics history. Mm. And yeah. you know, in Mercenary, what I think is going to sell the book, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know how you can look at this and not want to buy both. That's, That's just right. me. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. Well, we have Jake. JC, you have a you have a question here from the great Jane Sanchez Cabron <laughs> um, from New Mexico, Albuquerque. Uh, nice. Is this going to be a wraparound cover, or do we have to buy two books? No. Why would I sell you one book when I could sell you two? Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, it it uh, honestly, James, uh, I don't like doing that a whole lot. This is only the second time we've ever done this. Um, and we did it with Amanda Connor with uh, Harley Quinn and Power Girl. And it's not something we're, we do on a regular basis, but it is something that I thought this demanded. And quite frankly, it's because of the relationship of Billy and Brian that I thought of doing this as one big piece. Uh, yeah. And cool. I think I and, you know, you hear these guys talk on this show and I think you, you probably understand why. Um, because it could have just been two solo pieces and it would have still been, you know, nice to honor them in this way. But I think this is more spectacular. Yeah, this was, uh, it was great when we were having that discussion and, you know, Billy jumped in to want to do the covers. And I'm just thinking that it's just, it's just beautiful because, you know, it's so rare to have like, you know, Billy and I are brothers and we've been on this journey together. It, essentially our histories have been locked you know, since that very moment. And I couldn't be more thrilled. I, I can't imagine an, another person I would like to share the time with. Cause I mean, Billy is also like myself, you know, the world 
the world's a challenging place, but he cha he chooses to view it like in the heroic terms and to, you know, get up when you get knocked down and view the world in a positive fashion. So to earmark our wonderful 30th anniversary together with art by Billy himself is just, you know, it's it's like having your cake and eating it too. It's just, uh, it's quite an honor. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, yeah the, it, and, and, and the same here. And I, I mean, I know how crazy San Diego Comic-Con gets, but we had a wonderful intimate dinner. Thank you to you and Fran for buying us all dinner that was great. Um, after our panel. But um, we've got to do something. We've got to try to get together for something. If we can swing some kind of quiet dinner, us, with, yeah. with the gals, uh, something in San Diego, we've got to sure. embrace this moment. Again, 30 <laughs> years that we're still yeah. here. And Jeff, Jeff also publishes a book called Lost Universes. Yes, sir. Um, and it's an amazing book and the research that goes behind it. And you see all of these wonderful publication, publishing, you know, publications that have come out, these periodicals, these comics with these amazing art, this amazing storyline. And either through one thing or another, they they disappear, right? right. And, yeah. and and yeah, Billy, as we said, the, the character universes that have come and gone, and in some cases come again. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I get the most excited about, most passionate about talking about you two is this. You guys have had your ups and downs. Mm. You know, Billy, there was a period where you're not doing she now. You 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 burned a lot of energy doing Sergeant Rock and created, you know, something that is justifiably award-winning and remembered so so fondly. But in the end, you don't own it. Right. Uh, and you, I mean, I know you felt called to do that and you, you couldn't ignore, you couldn't, you couldn't half-ass it. You know, you, well, had, you, you burned a lot of energy to get, to get that done and it showed. Yeah. And everything, every bit of acclaim that that book got was because you went out and talked to people and you went out and sold it. There was no great marketing scheme yeah, behind yeah. that book. Right. So I look at that and I look at the ups and downs Brian's had uh, from the chaos days to the present. And that's part of the freaking story. These characters are still here. 30 yeah. years, man. Three yeah. decades. Yep. And I, we haven't hit our prime yet. There's not there's not a lot of indie characters. And man, there's been some wonderful comics. But there's not a lot of indie characters that have been around for that long of the 54-year history of the Price Guide. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I feel I definitely feel blessed to always have that opportunity. I mean, there's yeah, there have been those ups and downs. And there's look, there's been times in my career where uh in, in maybe the early OOs where I didn't even remember I was this guy, Brian Polito. Yeah, you know, I was sort of just like kind of going along. Yeah. And then I got kind of fired up all over again. And uh, I was like, oh, okay, I can do this, and you know, just got off my butt and went after it again. And I think yeah. that's to me that the, the that's the that's the excitement of your story even for somebody who hasn't met lady death yet or hasn't met she yet is is what you guys what you guys put into your characters i want to throw out a little overstreet trivia billy we've talked on the show several times about how your cover your fan your variant for overstreet's fan number 3 was the first cover i ever commissioned yes thank you for that the thank variant you. cover for overstreet's fan number 4 was <laughs> lady death yeah awesome so right back to back man you yep. guys again yep and we're still here that's right um guys uh we're running we're, we're, we're about five minutes it left um brian yes uh, please if you can tw everyone knows that 2024 is the 30th anniversary of lady death that's Talking right comics is kicking ass can you give us a little bit about what's happening in two weeks Oh uh, my gosh! There by you and in two what? weeks, everybody. It's Sworn Fest, Sworn Fest, Sworn Fest, Sworn Fest. The global gathering of Coffin Comics fans and the Sworn. We take over Mesa Convention Center for a weekend. We have 15 artists associated with Coffin Comics. It's morning, noon, and night. It's parties. It's tours of New HQ, which we are hard at work even to this moment making sure it's wonderful for everyone who's going to come from all over the world. If you haven't made plans, stop what you're doing and come out to Mesa, nope. Arizona and be part of Swarmfest, Swarmfest, Swarmfest. Let, let me let me tell you something. So Debbie and I were going to surprise you guys and we're going to come out, but it's the state wrestling championships and this is our <laughs> set. So we couldn't, we couldn't do it. Another um, time. But we wanted to go, but it's this is a once of a lifetime yeah. opportunity. I get it. Um, 
uh, real quick, uh, well, again, Chris, uh, the evil one. Thank you, brother. Um, can we please have a moment for Stephen Hughes? Indeed. The Lady Death artist. Wish he was around to celebrate this milestone with us. Abs I absolutely agree. In fact, today, as I was working on the newest version of the uh, our museum, I actually completed the Stephen Hughes in memoriam section. So uh, mm -hmm. Stephen is always on my mind. His contribution to my creative life has been tremendous. And it is uh, sad to say that in about on February 18th, he will have passed 24 years ago. He passed. Yeah, that, February seems, 18th, that, seems, that seems staggering. You yeah. know, to me, to me, he was so sy synonymous with you in, in the early days and what yes. I thought of Lady Death. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. You know, just wow. Yeah, just Stephen, Stephen in his story, he's just simply a one of a kind person. My creative relationship with him was unparalleled. When he passed, it was it was gutting for everyone, all concerned for uh, for a multitude of reasons. You know, uh, someone lost a, 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 a husband, someone lost a children. You know, we, I lost a, a creative co-conspirator you know a person who dared to like you know challenge the um challenge the status quo together so yeah it was a gut punch and you know sometimes you just never recover from things like that and by the same token you know getting up and moving forward also honors them yeah and i'll never forget the moment when you both were young bucks at san diego comic-con 1994 when we were all there and you guys just got done beating the shit out of two guys yeah. that, three guys that try to steal his art that's right. And they started fight. They started with you guys. You guys tore them up, and you almost got thrown out of the convention. Well, I mean, it was bullshit. Like Stephen, Stephen did get thrown out. We oh, did. And, and I'm like, why does he get the credit? You know, he got the blame. So I actually, you know, talked them back out of that. I'm like, you know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, like, you know, kick him out, kick all of us out. This is ridiculous. Anyway, long story short, yeah, we uh, that happened. <laughs> yeah, it was a great. Again, we were all so young, and it was just, it was it was awesome, and we just all hit along. Uh, Griever Enterprise for five dollars super chat. Thank you. Lady Death is the reason I have a Kickstarter account. Well, thank Early you. Collaboration between everyone's favorite bad girl creators, industry titans. Why thank they? you, bro. Or I got I got to say, I got to say, I suspect that Griever Enterprises is not the only one for whom that is true, based on what we've seen in the last twenty five and a half hours. Right. How do I get okay? Oh, and evil one more time. Evil one is is to take us out. Thank you for that two dollars super chat. Sworn fest, sworn fest, sworn fest. See you soon. See you soon. Yeah. Hey, uh, Brian, real quick, closing down 2024. You're in comic shops, you're doing conventions, you're doing how many more crowdfunding campaigns this year? Give us a little bit about coffin comics 2024. Coffin Comics 2024, since it's late at 30th anniversary, we take no prisoners. You could expect six Kickstarter, known Kickstarter campaigns from Coffin Comics. Uh, a very big surprise in a whole different category. A whole nother surprise with a bunch of uh, fellow creative near-do-wells. Dear Lord, we are not slowing down. Uh, Coffin Comics will have very special events at HQ throughout the year, and we will be at Phoenix Fan Fusion, we will be at Comic-Con International, we'll be at Tucson Comic-Con, and we will not be slowing down for 2024. So if anyone has that expectation, let me regulate your expectation right now. Coffin Comics is coming at you. Exceptional. So guys, everyone out there, um, I'm going to share this real quick one more time, the campaign. Uh, where is it? Here we go. I cordially invite you to back our campaign. Right yeah, now look at that. Coffin, okay, Coffin Comics um <clears throat> all new lady death demonic omens number one chapter 19 you are approaching two hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars. you just launched 25 plus hours ago yes. um the link is in the description guys as is the link to coffincomics.com as is the link to the overstreet price guide um and all the various um uh, levels you can get you there's soft cover right jeff there's a soft cover edition yeah. hard cover soft edition hard cover. packages that you could if you buy a soft cover package you you get a discount on that there, buy a hard there, cover. We, that is something I, I wanted to say just real real thing we all you know we're very retailer centric we do our we don't offer free shipping and stuff like that this is one instance where we are doing a special and that's if you get both because i'm not looking to strip mine uh, you do save you do save a bit of money if you buy both either the both soft covers or both hard covers. 
Excellent. Fantastic. Guys, thank you for a wonderful show. Everyone out there in the chat, please smash the like button. Thank, thank you for joining us, Brian. Thank you. Um, uh, again, Billy Touche, thank you so much, man. My brother yeah. from another mother, man, you are a blessing in my life. JC, thank you for the great opportunity being on Overstreet. I, I cherish it. And as you know, I'm a comics dude, so it is just a badge of honor for me. Thank yeah. you. And, and the great manly Bo Smith, always so impressed with Brian's level of professionalism. What an <laughs> example. And weatherman. <laughs> and I'm a weatherman. Watch out. <laughs> Indeed. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Brian. Great to see you, pal. Looking forward to working. I'm looking forward to seeing your work this year. Thank you. Um, nice person, man. Bring it. Yeah, looking forward to seeing you at the conventions. You uh, looking forward to seeing you at the comic on the comic stands. Jeff, thank, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. Um, I know how great a character must be to be on the cover to the Overstreet Price Guide, how talented a creator must be <laughs> to have his art. On the <laughs> ah, that's um, true. Anyway, guys, thank you all. Guys, please check out Lady Death. Let me make sure I get it right again because I'm getting Demonic Omens. Number one, always the greatest title titles in comics. <laughs> and um, guys, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go out. Let me hit the brand. And uh, everyone have a great night, Brian. Have a great weekend. Too, Congratulations man. tomorrow. Let's all have a drink for Lady Death Day, thirtieth yeah. anniversary tomorrow. Brian, will you be streaming? Will you be doing any sort? What What's going on for, for a coffin tomorrow for the thirtieth anniversary? Lady Death Day is all about the fans. We actually run a contest all day, hashtagging Lady Death, bringing Lady Death comics and standees out into your life photographing them all over the place. Rock that hashtag all day. We're going to award prizes. You can count on me getting out there, yapping it up a little bit. But really, this is about the fans, first, first and foremost. Rock mm. it out on Lady Death Day. Show your love for Lady Death. Let everybody know. Sworn. Sworn. Lady thank Death you guys. for life. JC, great to see you. Brian Polito, thank you so much. Thank you, Our man. very first guest on this channel we've done almost 800 shows wow. in the past four and a half years Whoa. and you are our very first guest and we wow. are honored to have it and we're honored to have you on again Dude, and uh, so i just want to check i see comments and make sure i don't have a super chat that i have to read up oh, one one more russell uh eric russellson thank you eric for two dollars super chat thank you night all you said it all brother Right Good night, on. Brian. Have a great night give our love to fran and everyone at the at coffin comics and vice and, versa uh, We'll see y'all soon. See y'all soon. Later, Bye -bye. everybody. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us on Pop XP. If you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button and also click the bell for notifications when we go live and we upload some awesome new content. Also, don't forget to head on over to Twitter and follow us at the Pop XP and over on Instagram at the Pop XP. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you soon.